Thank you all for joining us today as we kick off the fifth annual Zero Waste Conference, empowering a generation of equitable waste reducers amidst global crises. My name is Amanda. I am the program manager of RAP. Before we dive into the program today, I want to acknowledge that I'm speaking to all of you from the land of the Wiat people in Arcata, California. Arcata is known as Goudini in the Wiat language, meaning Thanks. among the redwoods. Wiat peoples continue to remain in relationship to these lands through ceremony, culture, and stewardship. They are important parts to not only the history of this area, but to the continuing knowledge and future of this place. So if you don't know whose land you're on right now, I encourage you to go find out. Educate yourself about the history of the place you live. Familiarize yourself with the work those tribal peoples are doing and how you can support that work. I am pleased to introduce Ms. Emily May, who is a mindfulness facilitator trained through UCLA's Mindfulness Awareness Research Center. Emily has curated this session to give everyone here tools, tips, and tricks for navigating the world of uncertainty from political unrest to systems of racial oppression, wildfires, ongoing climate change to a global pandemic, mindfulness can be a tool to change how we react to the world in these unprecedented times. If you have any questions during today's session, please use the chat function and Emily will get to it when she can. To register for upcoming zero waste conference events happening this week, please visit humble.edu forward slash events forward slash sustainability. So without further ado, Miss Emily May. And you're muted, Miss Emily. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> and thank you so much for acknowledging that we're on We Out Land. That's a very much appreciated uh, comment and something to take note of. Um, it's quite a a task that we all have right now to um, take care of ourselves and be okay in these bizarre, unprecedented times. So I'm really happy to, you know, let us all be together and hold hands for a moment and support ourselves um, as we take on how we can make a bigger change um, with the environment and what we can do as individuals. Um, so right now, the American Psychological Association is actually saying that mindfulness um, can be a way um, that we can help the environment. So uh, mindlessness, um, they're saying, is a function of automatic mental processes and leads to routine stereotyped or primed behaviors, such as daily actions that are unsustainable, like throwing out food into landfills or even, you know, not acknowledging our implicit racial biases. Um, whereas on the other hand, mindfulness can help us disengage from these automatic thought processes. And um, I can't really see any of you and I don't know what any of your um, familiarity. Thank you, Jaden, welcome. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I don't know what any of your you know, background with my, thank you all, welcome. This is lovely. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering if in the chat box, you all would mind writing in or even if you'd like to take your audio off, um, writing in what your conception or definition of mindfulness is and what your sort of experience is with it. Like if you meditate for 15 minutes every day or you've never meditated or just, just where you're at right now. Oh. Mm. These are all really good. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I'm going to share with you my definition of mindfulness or how I relate to it. And it's actually very similar, sort of a common thread through these with Jaden's and uh, Cassandra's and Crystal's very, very similar. So my definition of mindfulness 
is being aware of present moment experiences with an openness, a curiosity and willingness to be with what is. That doesn't mean everything's great, right? <laughs> it just means that we're aware, we're here and we're present. Um, they have found that being aware and being mindful is actually one of the ways that you can make yourself happier. So they did this study where they randomly sent, <laughs> they randomly sent participant, participants text messages throughout the day and they asked them four questions. They asked them, what are you doing? They asked them whether or not they enjoyed the activity, how much they were paying attention and to rate their happiness. And what they found was it didn't matter what the activity was. It didn't matter if they were having sex or doing the dishes or how much they liked the activity, the happiness was directly related to how much they were paying attention to their activity, which is sort of mind blowing. And a really great way that we can help nourish ourselves is to know that information. Um, okay, so even if you're feeling terrible right now, that's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna ask everyone to just go ahead and feel. So we're gonna do a little meditation together. This will be short. We're just going to sit all together and just feel where we're at right now. So I'm going to invite everyone to find a really comfortable seated position. And if it's comfortable for you and you feel safe right now, go ahead and let your eyes gently close. Go ahead and begin to feel your sits bones the two bony bones in your bottom and how they're making contact with the surface you're sitting on. Noticing the quality of your breath. It doesn't matter if it's shallow or deep, calm or agitated, just noticing. Begin to draw your awareness to each breath. Aware when the breath comes in. And aware when the breath leaves. And when the mind wanders away, as minds do, allowing yourself to gently, as if you're holding the hand of a small child, guide your awareness back to the breath. Connecting to a settling in your body. And when you're aware that the mind has wandered, notice just how gently you can be with yourself to come back to the breath. A 
approaching each breath like it's the very first breath you've ever taken. Holding it with gentle curiosity. And back to the breath, your gentle anchor. And then begin to draw your awareness back down to the base of your body. Feeling every point of contact between yourself and the surface you're sitting on. And allowing yourself to sink into that just a little further. And feeling supported by the earth, and by your cushion, your uncomfortable chair, whatever it may be. Yield to that support. Taking a moment to thank yourself for taking this time to nurture yourself to help build the skills to be stronger and more resilient. I'm taking a moment to feel gratitude for this event and the people that organize this event. These computers that let us connect. Anything you feel grateful for in the space around you. Experience that. Now when you feel ready, on your own time, allowing the eyes, if they're closed, to gently flicker back open allowing the light to flicker back in. And coming back to this room, the room that you're in, 
And coming back to our shared experience of this 2020 Zoom call. So thank you all so much for taking a moment to meditate with me. I very much appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna ask you all to share some of your experiences just because as you're beginning to develop your own meditation practice, even if it's just sitting for five, six, 10 minutes a day, it can be really helpful to have some of the experiences normalized and even to sometimes hear, yeah, that was really hard. Like that sucked and I didn't feel aware for a single moment. That is totally okay and there's totally space for that. And there's also space for totally transcendent, amazing experiences. It's the whole spectrum is available there. So if anyone feels comfortable, I'm gonna go ahead and start and share a little bit about my experience and then I'm gonna open it. And I would really love if anyone feels comfortable to take their audio off and to share and connect with the group a little bit. I would really love that. Uh, so my experience when I went into my body I felt a little tightness in my chest and I think it's from a feeling a little bit of nerves about hosting an event and being here with all of you and starting with everyone's screen blank and not knowing where anyone was or what they're experiencing or who anyone was. So um, yeah, I was really thankful for that time to be able to sit and sort of ground. And now I can see your faces, many of you, and I'm feeling really thankful. Um, yeah, so thanks for going through that with me. If anyone is comfortable or willing, please feel free to share your experience. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you were heard. Okay, my experience, it was a little difficult. I didn't really... I noticed that my mind was wandering off and then I was thinking about stuff that I went through recently and then when you were telling us to go back into our breath it was um and to notice the gentleness on that connection um that was pretty nice um definitely I, my mind kept wandering off though but um it is it was a good experience to sort of channel and center myself on that end nice so lovely. Thank you so much for sharing, Cassie. I really appreciate that. Um, and I just want to point out that when your mind does wander, that is the moment that your training begins. So when you become aware that your mind has wandered and you say, oh, my mind has wandered, that is you developing mindfulness. So the fact that you were able to see that your mind continually was wandering every time you said, okay, I'm going to go back to the breath. That was you becoming better. <laughs> So that was you doing a great job. And every time you noticed you were doing the practice and even awesome. if it, yeah, a hundred times, you just got a hundred times better. So thank you so much. Ah, cool. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. okay. Uh, is it okay if I Go ahead. Yeah. So the biggest thing for me um, was actually kind of towards the end. I do meditate on my own oftentimes, but you had said something kind of, uh, that really resonated with me about um, just yielding to the support that part like honestly kind of broke me because <laughs> I was just I don't know there's a lot of different things um, around me that have to do with taking up too much responsibility or too much weight and to you know like you said gently focus back on the breath and then even allow myself to almost just support myself but not feel like I am was very very interesting um and in my relationship that I had just with being grounded almost brought me to tears um just because I really felt <laughs> um I just really felt like I was lighter uh and that's that's one of the biggest things I feel that comes with presence and peace of mind and being presence in general is just the weight of the past or the future um, is, isn't necessarily there. So just thank you so much for that as well. Yeah, thank you. And I really appreciate you bringing up that grounding piece. Um, every time I sit down to meditate, the very first thing I do is find a way to get grounded. And the most tangible way to do that is to just feel 
the bottom of your body, just to feel where your bottom is making a connection to the ground or your chair, your feet on the ground, just feeling that literal physical grounding is so supporting and so helpful. And so like bringing you into the present moment when you're feeling that sensation, well, when you're feeling any sensation, but the sensation of being held and supported is really relaxing, really grounding and really, really helpful. Yeah, thank you for bringing awareness to that. Very much appreciated. All right, lovely, thank you all. Does anyone else feel to share? Go ahead. Um, I'm typing some stuff into the chat because I'm a little too chatty for coming on the mic and fully expressing myself. <laughs> so I'm referencing in what I will drop in the chat, an article I found last year called Speaking in the Present Moment. And um, basically a communication professor for speech communication incorporated mindfulness into their um, class and found it was really helpful. And there are lots of exercises included in that article, which I will put the citation for in the chat if anyone else wants to check it out. Um, so the author referenced not Hans, um, use of mantra with breathing. So when I, I just found myself getting really distracted and I kept on thinking things. So then that came to mind because I just read this article last week. Um, breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. Breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid. So anytime I felt really distracted, I just started thinking that instead. Um, and it feels a lot better now versus before I started meditating. So thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah, Thich Nhat Han is absolutely incredible. I'll definitely, definitely bring him up more today. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That's great. Um, so I'm going to read a little quote from Mark uh, Nepo's The Book of Awakening, um, just about what it's, what it's like to just stop <laughs> and feel. Um, so if you'll Go ahead, get back in your comfortable seated position. Close your eyes, do whatever you want. Um, and just hear these words. We waste so much energy trying to cover up who we are when beneath every attitude is the want to be loved and beneath every anger is a wound to be healed. And beneath every sadness is the fear that there will not be enough time. When we hesitate in being direct, we unknowingly slip something on, some added layer of protection that keeps us from feeling the world. And often that thin covering is the beginning of a loneliness, which if not put down, diminishes our chances of joy. It's like wearing gloves every time we touch something and then forgetting we chose to put the gloves on, we complain that nothing feels quite, quite real. Our challenge each day is not to get dressed up to face the world, but to unglove ourselves so that the doorknob feels cold and the car handle feels wet and the kiss goodbye feels like the lips of another being, soft and unrepeatable. So I just absolutely love that quote. It gets me almost every time. <laughs> Um, that's an awesome quote uh, like instantly I think the first couple of phrases like just tears came to my eyes yeah when I read it the first time I cried too <laughs> it's one of my favorites to share um yeah so when we stop give ourselves this time and space it actually allows us to be far more compassionate and one of the elements that I'm really liking to focus on this year because things are so difficult is being more compassionate with ourselves. Um, there's a lot more research out there about being like how mindfulness makes you more compassionate as a person in general. Uh, one of my favorite studies is they did a super interesting study at Northeastern University. They had, um, so they had everyone do an eight or, you know, everyone in the trial study. And then they had a control group that was not meditating, but doing like luminosity or, or some sort of just like mental training on the computer. Everyone else was doing a eight week, just 15 minute uh, mindfulness exercise. And so what they did is they called the participants in one by one 
and they didn't know this was the like what they were being tested on but they had three chairs set up and there were two people um like two people who were in on it sitting in two chairs and then the participant comes and sits in the third chair a fourth person comes in and they're visibly in pain so there are only three seats right now there are four people in the room this person's visibly in pain wincing and has a big boot on and the test is does the participant give the seat up or not and the other two um like people who are in on the study do not give the seat up so the people who were in the luminosity um group they gave up their chair only 14 percent of the time after eight week mindfulness training um that number jumped up to 40 percent so that's still less than 50% of the time people were unwilling to give up their chair to someone who was visibly suffering. But that is a huge quantifiable leap in how much we're able to empathize and connect to other people, which I think is just absolutely beautiful. And that was only 15 minutes a day. That's nothing. If you look at your like screen time app on your iPhone, you're on your phone for like what? hours and hours a day. So if we can like carve out some time, I mean, if everybody did that, the whole world would be a better place, right? But all we can do is take, take care and take action for ourselves. Um, so I'm gonna lead us in a little self-compassion exercise if you all feel comfortable with that. Um, <laughs> And so I'm just gonna go ahead and invite you to find that comfortable seated position. This one's gonna be, um, if you feel to like lie down, however you can get really, really comfortable because this is really about nurturing yourself. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of extra time to find the most comfortable position you can find for yourself and any way that you can feel extra supported. Maybe you want a blanket, maybe you need to go, I don't know, whatever you need to do, give it, give it to yourself. <laughs> And as we're moving into our extra super supported position, let's take a moment and be aware that other people are practicing in the same way. We're supporting not just ourselves, but we're connected with a group of people who are also supporting themselves by supporting ourselves we're supporting the entire world and we're supporting everyone we touch everything we touch allow yourself to feel where your body meets the earth And taking some time to feel grounded. Becoming aware of your toes. And giving your toes 100% of your attention. And your beautiful toes. And giving your feet 100% of your attention, showering your feet in love. And giving your ankles your attention, all your love. Becoming fully aware of your calves. Allowing any pain or discomfort to just be there. 
massaging this area with your awareness and your love. Embracing your knees with your awareness. And giving all your love and awareness to your thighs. Allowing them to relax and turn off if that's comfortable. Bring your awareness to your pelvic bowl. Letting go of any tension. Loving the base of your pelvis. Holds up and supports all your organs. Letting it rest. Giving your love to your belly. Letting it soften. And feeling it rise and fall with the breath. Giving your belly your love. Bring your attention to your sides. And bringing the awareness to the back of your body. Shining your love, your attention. all over the back of your body. Connecting to your shoulders, relaxing. Aware of any sensation. Showering your shoulders with love. Your arms, elbows, forearms, giving all of your attention to your wrists. to the palms of your hands. To your 10 beautiful fingers or however many you have. Allowing your love to travel to your neck, your throat, feeling gratitude for your voice. And if you feel judgment, just notice it. Not a time to admonish ourselves. Just a time to shower ourselves in love. To our chin. To our jaw. Love. 
loving our teeth, tongue, nose, cheekbones, our ears, feeling so much gratitude for our eyes that if we have sight, let us perceive the world. Loving our forehead, giving our awareness to our scalp, fully enjoying any relaxation we're experiencing. Allowing your awareness to expand outward, your whole body in your awareness. Holding your awareness on your heart. In the epicenter of your capabilities of love. And if you feel comfortable, gently bring your hands to your heart. Allow yourself to repeat in your mind's eye these words I have to offer if they resonate with you. You are safe. I love you. I will always take care of you. You are safe. I love you. I will always take care of you. You are safe. I love you. I will always take care of you. Feeling how this resonates in your body. Allowing your hands to drop away from your heart if that's comfortable. And just noticing how that feels. And 
and bathing in the waters of your own love, of your own compassion. Nurturing yourself. begin to bring our awareness back down to the base of our body. Noticing where we make connection. Noticing if we can let go and be supported just a little further. We'll visualize ourselves as we're sitting in the room, becoming aware of how we're oriented. And when you feel ready, once again, we'll allow the eyes to flutter back open moving really gently. Coming back to the space. Mm -hmm. Taking your time. So in the West, in the, the meditation experience in the West, people often find it far easier to send love out as opposed to directing love inward as we went through today, it's actually a more advanced meditation technique um, and can sometimes take a while and quite a bit of practice to connect to that and actually be able to offer ourselves that. Um, so if this did not resonate with you, that is okay. That is completely okay. Um, once again, I would really love to sort of normalize some of these experiences we might've had uh, with this exercise. And if anyone feels comfortable sharing. I know we just came out of a meditation. So I understand that as you're sharing, you're processing your experience. So it doesn't need to be perfect. Don't judge yourself for the words that come out, but do allow yourself if you feel comfortable the chance to be supported in a group that's holding space for you and you're processing. Um, and please do take advantage of, of that opportunity if you're comfortable. Hi, um, the biggest thing for me was uh, I felt like it became kind of like a, a positive feedback loop in that I would feel and be aware of the compassion that I can give myself. And then my mind would try to resist that with pain from the past or anxiety for the future. Um, and the anxiety for the future was a lot easier just being present, having a state of mind. Um, but the past part, the only way that I was really able to bring myself back to presence after those thoughts started to come was to shift the forgiveness and the compassion and the healing that I wanted for myself and sort of try to give it to them um, and try to give it to their conceptualization in my mind and their imagery in my mind. Um, and I feel like that 
was completely compounding upon what you said earlier about just being able to show compassion um, and, and realizing that that the same way you can't necessarily love anybody unless you love yourself. You can't forgive anyone unless you can forgive yourself. You can't show yourself, you can't show someone else compassion um, retroactively or retrospectively unless you know how to do that for your own self. Um, so that's that, that was just my piece. And it really, really excelled. Um, I feel like anyways, my understanding of the situations that I'm coming out of. Thank you so much for sharing. That was absolutely lovely, Mary. Yeah, I love the way that um, Jaden, you've given yourself the framework of I was going to the past and I was going to the future as a way to sort of give yourself a little bit of distance in the present moment from what those experiences are. And I think that's really powerful and really effective. So yeah, I'm glad everyone got a chance to to go into how you processed that. Thank you very much for sharing. Yeah. If anyone else is comfortable, please feel free to take to take over for a moment. Um, I'm comfortable. I just first wanted to say thank you so much for um, naming that this is a more advanced meditation exercise, mm -hmm. because this was literally the first exercise I was taken through by a therapist. And it made me think that mindfulness wasn't for me. This was years and years and years and years ago. Um, so Thankfully, I found my way back to it with a less judgmental mind frame. Um, and this went a lot better now than it did all those years ago, even despite the fact that maybe just before the pelvic area, I hear something next to me, I open my eyes and my cat's like this close, just staring at me. <laughs> and then I had to like take the next few minutes recentering and stopping myself from laughing. So if anyone <laughs> saw me laughing, it wasn't at y'all. <laughs> there's space for laughter too that's okay <laughs> lucky you for having a, a cat on your experience that's lovely <laughs> yeah thank you thank you very much for for acknowledging that yeah you, you had trouble with that in the past um that is a really common experience especially the way that we're socialized to be really really hard on ourselves and I just wanna say that while I'm very, very much in support of and encouraging all of you to find a way to carve out a, a, you know, a small amount of time that you can sit and come up with a practice that really works for you, I do not want for this, like missing a meditation practice or you know, not doing a good job to be another way to say that you're like not good enough. Um, so really, really take this time that you give yourself, even if you aren't able to do it, know that that time is just to nurture yourself. Like you are only doing that for yourself and do not use that time or that lack of time to say, I'm not good enough. Like I didn't meditate and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you all are so sweet. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, if anyone else has, has anything they'd like to share please feel free. I think the mantra really helped me of, um, I am safe, uh, I love you, and like, I will always take care of you because I, I often forget to, um, I do that for others so like, without thinking about it. And I don't really take the time to remind myself um, the same thing that I do for others. And so I think taking that time and just allowing myself that space um, to remind myself that I am these things for myself before I can be these things for anybody else is really nice. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If anyone else would like to share. lovely so thank you all very very much i'm gonna do a little one more meditation if you don't mind so we started the first uh meditation exercise that we went through together was using the breath as an anchor and that's sort of the most common um like step one uh, meditation i offered um sort of a like self-compassion self-healing because I think it's really important that as you know, you all go into this conference and are thinking about these really weighty things, 
and all the weighty things that are going on right now and sort of coming to a head in our, in our society, in our global society, um, we really cannot do anything if we're not resourced. And so that's why I think it's really important right now to just, just like the, the very most basic thing is, is being okay and taking care of yourself. So that's why I really wanted to do a self-compassion meditation. Um, but if neither of those clicked with you, that's totally fine. And there are like thousands of practices. So I'm just going to offer one more, a little sound meditation, um, in case, and maybe, you know, going into your pelvis or, you know, being aware of your breath was triggering or traumatic for you. You know, maybe you've been strangled in the past and, and going to your breath is uncomfortable. That is okay. That doesn't mean that, that you are not able to meditate. It just means that you're gonna have to find a different practice and that's totally fine. So I wanna offer um, a sound meditation as we, as we begin to go on our, on our separate ways. So let's go back one more time into that comfortable seated position. And perhaps it's a little easier after a few exercises to feel grounded. And taking a nice mental map of what this grounding feels like. Knowing that this grounding, this relaxation is a part of who you are. It's a natural state of your being. And if you're not comfortable right now, that's also okay. Noticing what that feels like and giving your discomfort as much space as you can. And keeping our awareness very open. And begin to shift your awareness to the sounds around you. Noticing what you can become aware of. aware that the sounds are just like everything else. They arise and then they fade away. And see if you can focus on a sound that's very close to you. Perhaps the sound of your own heartbeat, breath, or my voice coming to you through the computer. Noticing these sounds very, very close. And then we'll open our field of awareness further and see what sounds we can become aware of in the room or space that we're in. I'm trying not to judge the sound or label it that you like it or you dislike it. Just allowing it to come in and noticing when it fades away. Let's open our awareness even further and see how far away of a sound you can hear.
we'll slowly begin to bring our awareness back to ourselves, back to our physical body. back to where our body meets the earth. And once again, we'll allow light to filter back in as we allow the eyes to flicker back open and come back to our shared experience here together on the Zoom call. So infinite gratitude to all of you all for taking the time to show up for yourselves, to go into this conference feeling really grounded, I hope. And if you're not grounded, that's okay. <laughs> you can keep working at it. All right, thank you all so very much. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Have a great day. <laughs> Meditate whenever you can.